or a mandibular dyskinesia. So we have to be a little more clear on what we mean by that. So oromandibular dyskinesia can mean uh, at least two things, maybe more. One of them is the oromandibular stereotopy. So orolinguo buccal stereotopy. So um, kind of a quilia of the mouth in the patients, you know, sitting and, and talking. So oromandibular stereotopy or orolinguo buccal stereotopy is classic tardive, Korea or tardive stereotopy. And the treatment is a tardive treatment. So you have to use dopamine blocking medication or you have to use things like uh, tetrabenazine, baclofen is an option, clonazepam, depakote, amantadine is an option. All of these are treatment of choreas basically uh, that can be useful. The other form of oromandibular dyskinesia is oromandibular dystonia where there is more of a problem either closing the mouth to one to trying to speak, the mouth remains open or they have a jaw da, da deviation when they talk and they talk funny or they have trouble opening their mouth. So they have more of a jaw closing, just showing you the jaw really kind of becomes tight. And you have to figure this out. The treatment of choice for dystonia, oromandibular dystonia is Botox. We have just written a paper actually on it. One of my observers wrote a paper on oromandibular dystonia, botulinum toxin treatment, chemo denervation. Works really well. Uh, we reported a, a series of 37 patients with oromandibular dystonia with botulinum toxin treatment uh, was very effective no matter what type of uh, dystonia you have. So you have to figure out, are you treating oromandibular stereotopy, chorea from you know, tardive or non-tardive reason, uh, or are you treating oromandibular dystonia? And uh, those dystonia can be dynamic. So some people who have jaw closing dystonia may be able to have it come and go. And similarly, when you are opening dystonia, sometimes has like a very oral dystonia associated with it. And there is sometimes even lingual dystonia associated with it and can look very strange. So if you have a jaw dystonia along with a lip dystonia, along with a tongue dystonia, it can look very dyskinetic. This is because you know, the I mean, some kind of a strange problem, but it's just dystonia and you try to have to evaluate it and figure it out. Writer's cramp, writer's cramp, uh, which is the task passive dystonia of handwriting is uh, treatment of choice is botulinum toxin injection. Nothing works as good as Botox. If you do the right Botox, then writer's cramp is very, very effectively responsive. Otherwise, it's a treatment is just like any other dystonia. So the treatment of choice are baclofen, clonazepam, uh, trihexphenidyl, uh, and those are the main options. And then you can try other things. You can even try levodopa to see if they respond. Hemifacial spasm, treatment of choice is Botox. Botox works really well for hemifacial spasm, but it's a myoclonus. Uh, clonic medication. So you can use medication to use for myoclonus, which would be clonazepam as a first choice. Uh, baclofen will be second choice. And then for other, other myoclonic medications that you can use, mostly those are brain suppressant, benzodiazepines, or those kind of medication. Avoid SSRIs, avoid gabapentin, pregabalin in these patients uh, with hemifacial spasm. But treatment of choice for writer's cramp, hemifacial spasm, by far the treatment of choice is uh, botulinum toxin injections, uh, chemo denervation. All right, so we have a few more minutes. I might have to stop in five minutes or so. I'm trying to, I'm getting some messages. Carbamazepine is, uh, is a reasonable option for hemifacial spasm to try. It's more effective when there is uh, injury, nerve injury, or uh, a reason for hemifacial spasm. So it's more effective, for example, in trigeminal neuralgia, and uh, facial nerve neuralgia, and things like that. And for same reason, you can use a hemifacial spasm. You can sometimes have hemifacial spasm from seventh nerve injury. Uh, for example, someone had a uh, Bell's palsy and now they have hemifacial spasm. And it, those hemifacial spasm looks very atypical. So classic hemifacial spasm is idiopathic. You sometimes find a loop of a seventh nerve, a loop of an artery touching the seventh nerve, but even that is only seen in a third of the cases or less. 70% uh, patient has nothing on imaging, nothing on history. And those are the classic hemifacial spasm. And carbamazepine doesn't have too much of a role in those patients. But if it's a Bell's palsy, seventh nerve injury, trauma, post-surgical, post-radiation, I have a patient who had a, 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 um, a cochlear implant done for hearing loss and removed, and now he has hemifacial spasm. But that's a secondary hemifacial spasm caused by a nerve injury. In those patients, there is a role for carbamazepine. He actually takes carbamazepine with good response, but he also gets Botox with carbamazepine only gives him partial response. Very good. So dystonia, let's talk a little bit more about dystonia in terms of treatment. So dystonia, you should think of treatment 
separately for generalized dystonia and uh, focal dystonia. They behave differently. In a generalized dystonia, the treatment is usually brain surgery, DBS, or you can try medications like baclofen. You can try trihexanidyl, clonazepam, levodopa. All of those are good options, and you try to improve the dystonia that way. But often it's not very successful unless they are levodopa responsive, and then you have to go to brain surgery. Focal dystonias like blepharospasm, cervical dystonia, jaw dystonia, limb dystonia, upper lower limb dystonia. Uh, the the treatment of choice is botulinum toxin injection. They don't respond to medications very well. The generalized dystonia do respond to medication reasonably well uh, for a, a, until a while, and then they have to go for some uh, a DBS or something like that. But focal dystonias typically don't respond to oral medications very well. Although we try the same kind of medications, just like we do use for generalized dystonia, but, but usually you don't get too much of an effect and you have to go for chemo denervation as early as you can convince the patient. And Botox works really well for all of these dystonia. So blepharospasm for cervical dystonia, jaw dystonia, facial dystonia, upper and lower limb dystonia is very, very responsive to, to uh, botulinum toxin injection. And um, you can get three to four months of a benefit from, from one session. Korea, you know, we, we talked about tardive dyskinesia briefly before, but Korea is similar. So Korea, the treatment is to reduce the dopamine tone. So the ideal treatments are things like tetrabenazine, deutrabenazine, valbenazine. These are all VMAT2 inhibitors. So they basically deplete dopamine, they're dopamine depleter. So they prevent the recycling and further formation of dopamine. So they're not blocking dopamine receptors, but they're just do depleting dopamine. So you don't have enough of it. The main side effect with them at high dose will be Parkinsonism if you really deplete dopamine too much, but that's a reversible Parkinsonism. They don't cause, cause tardive dyskinesia because they don't uh, attach to dopamine uh, receptors. Now you can use dopamine blockers for Korea, like uh, Haldol and Risperdal, but the problem is that they often alter the dopamine receptor sensitivity and create tardive problems. Um, 